So for the past few videos, we've been remaking games using Minecraft as our game engine. I want to take a break from that and revisit our Discord games to not only add a new game this video, but also to start progressing towards refactoring the code, making it a bit better, and overall progressing towards making this code be able to work publicly so that way you guys can all add this bot, all these games, to your own Discord servers and be able to play them that way. We'll progress towards that, however, we're not quite there yet, there's still a lot of work to do, but we can at least start making small steps towards getting to that end goal. For this week's game, we are going to try and implement a rather simple game in theory, but also one that has been well requested, and that is Tic-Tac-Toe. To start it off, I first had to come up with how I wanted to display the game board. I went through a few iterations of this, the first of which was just kind of regular text characters in a code block to display the game board using kind of makeshift X's and O's and lines. Overall, I was not very happy with it, it did not look symmetrical at all, and it just very much felt very clunky. For the second iteration of this, I still stuck with using characters, but this time I went with Unicode characters in order to try and make the symmetricalness fit, but this one still didn't fix that really clunky feeling as the X's and O's worked and everything was symmetrical and aligned correctly, but the game board just did not look good whatsoever. I even tried to like space them out and give them space between each character and that made it look a little bit better, but still the lines between each cell were just way too thick. It didn't work in the end, so I decided to scrap the idea of trying to make these with ASCII characters and Unicode characters and actually go back and reuse the system I did for chess. Because of this, I was quickly able to get the X's and O's and game board all generated through URL, and we were soon able to be able to use this as our base building blocks for our tic-tac-toe game. So now with the game board all ready to go, all we had to do now was get the base code set up for tic-tac-toe. And because I'm a lazy programmer, what I did is actually just took Connect4, copied the code over, and just slowly piece by piece redid it to fit tic-tac-toe because all my games share a very similar code structure they all had a base code to them so i could just rewrite that code and rework that code to work for tic-tac-toe instead of connect four one thing that did get switched up however was how i was actually showing the game board in the game itself on discord previously with here with chess what we were doing is we were showing the url which was triggering discord into showing the picture of it below the image However, we found a much cleaner solution in that you can actually add the URL to a Discord embed, and when you change the URL as a part of that embed, Discord still updates the image that gets generated from that URL. Now this means that we're missing is the actual game code to run tic-tac-toe and update that image that gets posted in that embed. Now because of this and because I'm a lazy programmer, what I actually ended up doing is I went to my tic-tac-toe game I made in Minecraft as a chance key reward, which you can see a link to here to see that video of the reward working in Minecraft. And I essentially just took that code, copied it, pasted it into this project, and then went through and ported all the Java code into JavaScript, which luckily while they're not the same language, they are very similar enough to where you can actually go line by line and kind of variable by variable and just change the relevant bits as most of it does port almost one to one easily. So now with that code ported, it was a slow process of going through, running the game, finding an error, fixing the error, running the game, finding an error, fixing an error, over and over and over again for a good long while before we finally had all the code ported over, error free, working, and giving us tic-tac-toe. One thing I didn't mention though is that when I ported that code over from Chance Cubes, it also included an AI, which uses the Minimax algorithm to pick the best possible moves because it simulates the entire game every step to pick the best move in the end, and it makes it unbeatable. You can't win, it, it, it can't lose. So there is an AI, but there's a problem with that you can't beat it. So the next thing we had to do was to add a kind of virtual or makeshift handicap to the AI to where every one in I think five was what I ended up deciding on, every one in five chance it would instead of doing mini max algorithm, it would just pick a random square on the tic tac toe board to pick. This way it gave the player a chance to win, however it also still kept the AI relatively difficult and hard and just still a realistic AI to where you weren't just winning every time. 
And with that done, all that was left was to add a little bit of polish and cleanup, like adding numbers to the game board where you could then at least have a way to relate the uh, reactions that you use to pick the slots with the game board visually, and then also to make the reactions disappear once they had been used to then only show the reactions of slots that you could actually pick. And there we go. We have Tic-Tac-Toe playable in Discord. It's complete. And so while Tic-Tac-Toe might be done, like I said at the beginning of this video, the work we were also doing was not just to make Tic-Tac-Toe, but also to work towards making the code cleaner and easier to manage, and also set up to where I could add this publicly. And the first thing of that was to also switch chests to use the same embed image system that I used in Tic-Tac-Toe. And then in terms of more of the global code, I also went through and adjusted all of the game commands to run through one check instead of having this big giant if else ladder, which also allowed me to make a more generic checks to only allow one game instance at a time. This is because the games don't really stack well, so I could only really allow one instance of the game without kind of the games becoming unplayable, but also to allow one player to only be playing one game at a time. So in the end, lots of improvements here and will hopefully again lead me down the line to be able to make this bot be public. The only other thing I want to call out that I've added that was a kind of a big help for people is an end command. There's now a command that you can then use to end a game early, don't have to wait for the timeouts. Um, this is more of a cleanliness thing to allow you to be able to then end a game and switch games and not have to wait for timeouts or finishing the game. So that was also added, but there we go. Tic-Tac-Toe is added. We have started the process of cleaning up code in order to get to a point to where I can make this public. Again, I've said it a million times, but the bot is currently not public as of making this video. Hopefully in the future, I can continue working on this and making it in a better state where I can now host it to so then you guys can add it to your own servers. Still working on the details. It's a, a lot to do. Again, these games are kind of hard because they're not specifically meant to be running quite well on Discord. Some of them push limits pretty hard, so getting this into a spot where I'm comfortable making it public and for people to use is uh, interesting, but I think in the end of the the grand scheme of it all, I think this is definitely what people are wanting and uh, what I should be going forward with for myself. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed these games as it is, and hopefully you're excited for the future of these. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.